So you want more inputs and outputs on your audio interface without having to spend an extra thousand plus on getting a new interface or expansion. So your solution is the optical in. It's this little flappy door on the back of your audio interface and it's there on many many audio interfaces right down from the sort of mid-tier budget up to the multiple thousand pounds. It gives you an additional expansion option. Now there's a whole host of different options and ways you can do this. So below I've just made one single link that will show you my setup and how I've done it but then also the alternatives that you could use in that space or configuration. So hopefully you can work out what's really best and needed for your situation out of that without having 50 different links to different manufacturers. Now this isn't the perfect solution to everything. There are some limitations with using these optical ins. The first thing is you've got a sample rate limitation. See ADAT can carry eight channels and it can carry those eight channels at 44.1 kilohertz or 48 kilohertz. However, if we want to go above and beyond that, we reduce down the number of channels that can be used significantly. Another limitation that comes into play is having an optical in and an optical out. For example, the Apollo Twin here only has an optical in, meaning it can take an input of eight ADAT channels, but it however cannot then output those eight channels as well. So if you wanted eight additional inputs and eight additional outputs to route to hardware, a mixer or another solution like extra monitors for example then you need the optical input and output. So having a look at your audio interfaces, we'll stay with the Apollos here. My Apollo Twin only has an optical in. However, if I was to go for the Apollo 4X option, this comes with an extra two analog inputs, but it also has an optical input and output, meaning I could add those eight additional ADAT channels and eight additional out ADAT channels as well. Now there are options out there which have internal routing. The Octo Pre Claret, for example, is an example of this. And this will allow you to use just that optical in, and then you can route the optical in data to the outputs internally in the hardware, but expect to pay quite a bit more for this feature. And it's still a significant saving to do it this way if you need those outputs. So all the things you'll need to do this are very simple. The first thing is an audio interface that has an optical in and the ideal situation, the optical in and out. From there, you're gonna need a ADAT interface of which there are many. The example here, I'm using the Behringer 8200 going into the Apollo Twin in, meaning the eight outputs on this Behringer are essentially useless unless I have an interface with the optical out as well. You'll need an optical cable. A standard cable is gonna be absolutely fine. However, if you're looking at some IT solutions, they'll have a very small connector and they don't work with all interfaces. You'll also need your additional jack or XLR cables because whatever you're routing, for example, the MPC down here, going into these new inputs needs a physical audio routing cable to go in. And don't forget as well, you need an additional power supply because this ADAT interface is its own interface and will have a separate power supply. It can't be powered via something as simple as the optical cable. So make sure you've got either a surge charge protected power block or just have an additional wall outlet free in your space. Setup wise is relatively simple. Your audio interface will have some kind of management software. For the example of the Apollo here, we open what's called console from Universal Audio, and that allows us to configure the inner workings of the Apollo interface. Because it only has an optical in, we need to set the clock to be ADAT. That means the Behringer 8200 will send the clock to the optical input. If you have both, you can route the clock from the internal and tell the ADAT interface to be the clock source and the ADAT interface will slave to that. Once we've set this, we also need to set our recording. Now, I usually record in 44.1. We need to set this on the ADAT interface as well because the type of clock that will output from the interface is relevant. So on the back of the 8200 here, we've got a slider and we would set that to the ADAT clock at 44.1. Once all those are set up, you can see here in console, I've now got an extra eight input channels labeled ADAT one through eight. And if we 
hit something on say the MPC, we can send it out to those via the routings here. So that's the simplest and easiest way you can add an eight extra inputs and outputs to your current audio interface without having to undergo a massive spend. If you've got any questions, throw it in the comments down below and I'll see if I can help you out. And take care, I will see you in the next one.